the rest of the woman, focuses on the foot. Uh, I saw, I think I saw Liam and his problem as a, a way for me to address very early, very basic needs in my life, which you know had to do with. Um, I grew up in a household where alcohol was a problem, and from a very early point in my life, my greatest need was to help people who strong. who I really couldn't help. You know, it's the strong. problem is bigger yeah. than than a child, yes. uh, and I'm yet it becomes that. <laughs> earliest, most essential need. Mm. And then you live a pattern. In and your what life. about the guilt when you had the affair then? You had this passionate affair with another man. How long did it last, roughly? Do you know, it's so fuzzy and and in 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 a sense the details of it are so inconsequential in my mind yes. now that um, Yes, but I'm getting at the guilt feelings you must have had. You were you were yeah. married in a in a believing household. Yes, exactly. And I mean, you knew I came right from wrong. Exactly. Yes. I mean, my background is not much different uh, from probably most of yours, except that uh, we were in a different city, but we were still Irish Catholic, and where we came from still affected us. Mm. You know, my mother's family was from Mill Street, and. Uh, my father's family would have been from the Northwest, and we, as Irish Americans, we carry very much of, um, very much of the whole Irish Catholic uh, cultural experience with us. Hmm. So, um, certainly it did not sit well with me that I found my life at the point at which it was. Um, uh, it, that is that is why really I, or that's part of the reason why I set about writing the book. For me, it was kind of a catharsis. Mm. Mm. Um, right. Um, now the reason why uh, we have Noreen Nirian and Mihola Sulawine with us is because the last time they were on the show, well, one of the last times on our River of Sound special, you may remember on that occasion in February '95, Noreen told us, and I'm quoting, that she had married the first man she ever kissed him to be Michal, True. and she said he was the exceptional father, husband, lover, and great old pal. And she told us that during the course of the marriage, they'd opted for a healthy fight rather than flight. And they must know what they're talking about because they're married 23 and a half years now, and they've known each other 27 years. Um, you, you both said on that occasion that you've never had any idea but that you were absolutely right for one another. Noreen. Yes. I'd you say did. yes. You did say I, I'd that. say yes. Don't and deny certainly, it. I have it here certainly in black and like white, any huh? couple. I mean, we've gone through the dregs and all that too, you know. But I would say it, and I'd have to say it even now, at this moment. What happens tomorrow or next week, I can't say. And I think that's the vulnerability of relationship is that you're creating a space out there that you've no control over. And as Peg says, and Peg, I loved the book. I really think it's so important that you wrote it at this particular time, for because um, I, I, I think we are changing so rapidly in our concept of relationship, in our concept of marriage. Um, I work with some young girls at home. I don't have any daughter myself, and one side of me would have loved to have a daughter. But I work with some young kids at home, young girls, between 18 and 27, 26. And my goodness, have, is their concept of relationship so different to what we were brought up with, to Peg's generation, to my mother's generation, do you know? It is different, Oh, it's so, so yeah, totally different. different. And there's yeah. a total, they know exactly what they want from relationship. And I think it's all the better for that. So I think it's a imp very important time in Ireland. I think also, Peg, and you're not on, you're not... Hold, hold on, Noreen, just a minute. Did you also say that he is perfect? <laughs> and God, he's, well, he's really nice. Honestly, I, I mean, I, you know... I, I, That's I, not what you no. said. You said he's perfect. I, well, honestly, I, you know, there, there are... I, if, if there's anybody perfect, it's Mick Sullivan. <laughs> Honestly, I, I really, and I'm saying that now, not out of. Um, but I think anybody would know it. I think Gail, you'd probably say it from afar too. And I think a lot of people. <laughs> it doesn't turn me on at all. I mean, I, I love the way he plays the piano and so on, but uh, it wouldn't go further than that. What about you, Michal? Would you would you say well, a word about um, that? Yeah, well, Noreen, obviously, it, it's all, it's embarrassing to sit here and be told perfect in that sense. But but the notion of rightness of a relationship. I, I mean, I think a lot of people, a lot of people have this experience. And really, you only have it, in fact, if you run into trouble. 
uh, because, because the notion of who you're with only gets tested when you run into trouble. What do you mean by trouble? Well, uh, difficulty in relationships. Any kind of trouble? Any kind of trouble. It could, it could have to do with, with something like alcohol. It could have to do with other people entering the relationship. It could have to do with feelings of jealousy or envy or possessiveness and all of those things that we all know of and experience at different points in our life and in different ways. But the relationship really only, in a sense, uh, I won't say comes alive, but is proven by difficulty. And uh, mm. it's in the face of that difficulty that I think Noreen said that thing of a sense of rightness. I, I would have that sense of rightness as well. But of course, you can't be smug about it. I, I agree with Noreen when she says that you can't simply say that because we've been together for 27 years or 23 years or whatever it is, that you're going to be together for 28 or the, the next one. You know, you just cannot. Well, you, could you, could yeah. either of you envisage having an affair with somebody else? Either of you? I certainly could, yeah. Good yeah. man. Please, please, God. Please, God. Please, God. <laughs> Hold on, you uh, and, 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 and you, speaking. Noreen, yeah. you, you could envisage. Uh, please, God. Please, God. <laughs> God is no, good. No. You never know uh, what he's going to do. Because, hold I mean, on. I, here's, I, the, here's the crunch, yeah. Noreen. I'm sorry for interrupting right. you, but if he came home and said he'd had an affair with somebody, what, what would you do about it? Oh, gosh, I think it's a very, very big question, um, Gay. Um, and if, even the word affair, there's I something know, derogatory about yes. it, isn't there? Yes. I mean, if he came home and he said, yes, you know, that he had a one-eyed fling and all that, I think we'd probably eventually laugh, because we laugh a lot between us. Mm -hmm. And I think, we've, I think laughter is really important. And Peg, that was the one little thing I wanted to ask you about, was um, laughter, you know, just um, that very serious side that comes about. Um, no, but you were asking me a specific question there. Yeah. Okay. What would you do about it? So you'd laugh, so you have a great sense of humour, so, th so then what? And I suppose it would depend then as to whether he was saying um, that affair is, is it now over? Um, is it something that, you know, I, did, I, did, I suppose there's a generosity too that you've got to look and I've got to look at Mick. I've got to, first of all, look into myself and say, can I cope with this? If Mick Sullivan wants to have an affair and wants it to be ongoing, can I cope with it? Well, could you? Um, that's when your relationship is tested in the way that Michal was speaking of. I mean, that's when you realize the substance that your relationship is made of. And I mean, I think early, early on in our marriages, very often we enter on a naive basis. And very easily people will say, oh, well, our marriage works because, well, we trust each other. And I very often think that when people talk about trust, what they're actually talking about is control. They're saying, um, we work on the basis. I think that what they're really saying, without admitting it, is that we work on the basis of thinking we can control all the unknown variables that might come into play, that might test us. Trust, I think, is an illusion in, in a lot of senses. And I think while it's, in a, in a sense, it's a, a beautiful idea, it is a naive idea, you know, and I think that most of us get to the point in our marriages where trust uh, really isn't there any longer, and we don't miss it because we found something else. We found out the substance that the relationship is made of, and that it's something actually much more sturdy and pliable than the naive basis that we entered, uh, that we entered the marriage with, you know. Um, did, did, I, I have the impression from reading about you that God didn't enter into this equation at all, whereas you, Noreen, would say that there is a God context in all of this. Oh, we both would, I think. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I, yeah. I think from our point of view that um, uh, the notion of a spiritual life is terribly important. We'd have it individually, individually we would have had it before we met, and it's something, to, to a large extent, that we would share. We'd, we'd have it very, very differently. In fact, uh, we spent our honeymoon in, in Tese. To his community. In a monastery, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Friends. But, uh, but, but um, um, no, the notion, like I think for either of us, even in making sense of life, not to mention relationship, your own life, without, without a spiritual context, would 
be very difficult, I think, for either of us. But so, so it's natural in a, in a relationship. And yes, that didn't necessarily come across in Peg's book, although you described that issue of um, an Irish-American Catholic background, I think, and you know that that, that is a, a very definite cultural uh, thing to come out of. But yes, that would be very important for us. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, just go back, Noreen, for a moment to the young people today you're talking about who mm -hmm. have a completely different expectation in this regard. That is it, is it non-romantic or unromantic or rather more concrete in some way? Is that what you're getting at? I think more realistic, because, of course, I mean, when you consider us in our time, we're 45 and older. Um, we, we, we had no, I mean, we, we went into marriage with no education, no media, no books like pegs to read. And so we had really no, we went into it like, you know, it's, 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 it's so much you were talking about. It's like the story of the, 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 the couple who are walking down the aisle in the church just after getting married. And uh, she turns to him and she says, John, did you hear the priest saying there now that from now on, we are one and he said yeah I heard I heard him Mary well as long as you remember that is I'm the one <laughs> <laughs> you know that element of control certainly is there I don't think young people have that I, you know certainly the girls that I'm thinking of now they spend more time together you know and going through their youth and um, working on themselves too which I think is Peg's real point that before we can actually enter into relationship even though Mick doesn't agree with uh, all together we've been Peg you've given us so much to talk about we haven't stopped talking for five days and um, but um, that you know, it's it's um <laughs> which well, one you know, of you? I, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, could I say you're not not to idealise the, the situation of you know, I agree largely what Noreen is saying and, and I know this youth people from this youth group and indeed you dealing with students myself, there's a much greater level of awareness of the difficulties actually of building a what you might call a real relationship. Um, and also there are things like counselling, which weren't there in our time, do you know? And Peg, actually, that was one question I wanted to ask you about. Did the whole idea of counselling ever come up when you were going through this hell? Um, no, we never went for outside counselling. I think partly that has to do with the fact that, um, you know, as a woman, <coughs> I think many, many women might relate to the fact that in the midst of it, I really felt like it was my job to make the relationship work, that this was supposed to be my realm. And, um, and if it was wrong, you're at fault. Yes, if it was wrong, then I must be at fault. Yes. You know, and uh, you, were, you brought up the issue of vulnerability, mm -hmm. and I just thought I would um, love to pick up on that thread, um, because that's very, very important, I think, in the life of a woman who is going through the experience of um, dis disillusion with romance and disappointment with marriage. Um, vulnerability is the primary um, feeling, I think, and I think that at the core of the vulnerability, for me, I have to speak specifically of, of my experience, I think, because that's my basis for yes. understanding the world. The core. Um, the, the, the basis of my vulnerability was that I was raised to believe that um, I would find, I was, in a sense, m my mother certainly wouldn't have raised me this way, but I think society raised me this way. Society raised me to believe that um, I would find a man, and in that man I would find a sense of meaning and fulfillment, and everything would somehow fall into place. And my identity would be derived through him because he needed me. Now, when I was in the situation, he didn't seem to need me. He didn't seem to need me in the way I needed him to need me. Very liberal minded thinker. <laughs> Very, very, very well expressed. I'll take a call then. Um, uh, sorry, Noreen. I'll... Hello, line three. L line three. Hello. Hello, line three. Sorry, I'll try again. Hello, line three. Yes, I can hear you. you I, I can't. Yes. I can. Yes. Okay, I'll cope with that. Oh. 
No, no, hold on for a minute. I'll ask that one. I'm sorry, that's not onto the floor, but it's, it's through. I can't account for it. It is line three you're talking about, isn't it? Right. Okay. Ah, there you are. Hello? Hello. Yes, you're there. Okay. Just, okay, repeat the question then. Um, how, Peg, how could her husband... How could, her hus how could she expect her husband, husband to take her back yes. after degrading him in the most horrendous way? Also, how did she feel about actually committing, the, you know, having the affair? How could you expect your husband to take you back after degrading him? Right. I didn't have any set of expectations when um, it came to light. Like most people, I thought it would be the end of our relationship. To my surprise, when my husband found out about this, he broke down and was remorseful and apologized to me. <laughs> That's pretty exceptional. He felt he's a remarkable human being. OK, line three, what was the second bit of that? Um, how did she actually feel about Sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear that, what? How did she actually feel about having the affair? How did you feel about having the affair? Yes, yeah, sorry, I couldn't hear you there. Um, did you I enjoy the affair? To... Did you enjoy it? Um, I enjoyed the feeling of seeming important to ah. someone, seeming interesting to yes. someone. That was, that was the, the vulnerable point in my life which I had gotten to. Yes. Through the common neglect that many of us practice in our relationship, I found myself at the point where I was so hungry to feel interesting, yes. to feel important. And this man made you feel all of those things. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, line three. Yes, sir. I'm coming to you. Yes. Oh, hold on. Uh, the, the two women here in the second row. First of all. Yes. Let's hear from you. Your arm has gone dead. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I was. Um, I was engrossed in that. Yes. I didn't read the, the book. That's all. But, right. um, I agree with what Peg is saying, and I think we all fall in love with an idea. Yes. And it's part of our conditioning from childhood that we go to school, we get married, we meet somebody, we get married. Knight in shining armor. Fall in armor. love. And then the babies come along and they go to the pub or whatever. Mm. And that's still happening. That's, to this very, the other lady Positive. said she, that she has so many girls from all to six, yeah. whatever age. I work with 34 women on a daily basis. Yeah. And that's where it's stemming from, Gay. And unless we change ourselves and go through the feelings that what we need, not what our partner needs or what our husband needs, our needs, yes. our immediate needs, yes. to comfort us, not to comfort them, not to be always at home, cooking, lighting fire, cooking dinner, looking after the kids, our needs. Do you dig when that, we Maureen? get in touch with our own needs, you dig then that? we can have a proper yes. relationship. It, it sounds kind of selfish. It's not gay, no. If you take into the situation that this couple I have over yeah. here, she doesn't mind if he goes has have an affair and I they didn't laugh she about didn't it. Quite no, say that. Will, will you laugh about it? If if if, if you did go off, Michael, is it? Yeah. Go off and have an affair. I'm telling you, you would be very very hurt, very hurt. If and you, you have to go through the process in order to feel the pain. Okay. You really Noreen. have to be there. I agree with you entirely that you have to go through the process to know the pain. I agree with you. You can't talk about um, alcohol if you, don't, if, if you haven't been drinking. I agree with you. You have to be right there, right down in the depths to know what you're talking about. And I know, because I've been fairly near but there myself too. you haven't been too. there. Don't patronise I've, I've been fairly near there. I've talked about I, what Peg was saying. Right. OK, I've been fairly near there. But now Peg don't get angry with me. Peg has been through a situation hold, hold, where hold, she hold was on, hurt. Hold yeah. on. Yeah, yes, Nora, you, you've um, been I, I, close to that, you say. Absolutely. I think any married couple who are doing any kind of a journey have been near the depths. Now, we would all express it in very, very different ways, you know. And I do agree with your point. But what I am saying is, I know you're talking about your, your young women, but I am talking about um, just the women, the young girls that I know, and I feel they are ex extremely dif uh, different. I feel that it's probably, we're probably talking about different, uh, different types of young girls. And, but also, I do feel that there's something in the whole Irish context that I think what Peg is talking about at this particular time. I think it's probably to do with the goddess. It's probably to do with Bridget, it's probably to do with the Hagebear. Do you know, there's something about us that I think in relationship we are way ahead of, of I feel, America or whatever. Do you? Yes. Are you married, um, um, Tommy? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, just thought I, would, I just thought I would ask, that's all. Are you? Uh, I'm not married, no. no. Um, uh, but I did have sex once. <laughs> <laughs> That's, 
that's not what, what I asked. I, uh, do you have a comment about all of this, not being married? Um, oh, I, I think are it's... Are um, about all of this? Oh, God, I am, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, no, I think... Um, I think it's... I'd, I'd love to be able to be celibate. <laughs> because I think it's easier to get on with someone if you're not getting off with them. <laughs> <laughs> and I think... I think that um, I think marriages and relationships are like, they're kind of like haircuts. In haircuts? That, yeah, well in that everybody has an opinion on everybody else's haircut. <laughs> and in the sa same way that uh, every, every room would have a haircut that no one can explain. <laughs> every street would have a marriage that no one can explain. And people stay together for the darkest reason sometimes. I'm, 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 I'm very scared of it. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Sorry, Tony. That's, that's, that's very, very good. That young man there. Sorry, hold on. Yes, yes hello. The arm was falling yeah, off. I know, I'm very sorry, <laughs> yes, but, but you see a lot of people. Aren't. I'd yeah. like to ask Peg a very simple question, actually. What, what relationship do you have with the man you had the affair with now, and what's he up to? Um... <laughs> It's non-existent. I mean, we didn't really deal with each other as whole human beings. We were dealing with each other as images, I think. Sex objects? And no, not even that. Not, not even, even that, that, to be honest. No, I is think... Your uh, is your husband curious to find out more about him, or is he interested? Not at this point. I mean, at this point to us, it's ancient history and even at the time I think he knew more than he cared to. <laughs> okay, yeah, lady in red up there, yeah, hi. Yeah, just a question for Peg. Um, you were talking about how you felt so insecure and how you felt the problem was always yours and not your husband's. Um, do you feel that by having the affair you eventually became fulfilled and better able to cope with the problems? You certainly don't look like an insecure woman now. The affair was not a positive experience for me. Uh, it was, and this uh, picks up the, the caller's second question, which I wanted, I wanted to get back to the second part of the caller's question, which was, how did I feel about it? Um, you know, as we already sort of covered, I'm from the same kind of background that many of you are from, and for me, there was a lot of um, feelings Re of... Remorse? Remorse Guilt. and immorality. Yes. It was not part of my self-image to right. find myself at that point in my life. That's okay, that's Didn't fair. imagine that, uh, that this was the point of breakdown that we were going to get to. And that... So, if, if, you know, for any... I think the first caller was suggesting, look, I got the sense from the tone of her voice, look, this is a sin. Yes. You're it's, called, it's called adultery. <laughs> exactly. It's called the same thing. It was called the same thing for me as a child. It, even as it occurred in my life, the label didn't seem to fit. I always felt myself the most constant wife, in a sense. I felt like I had, my intentions were always good. But that's always the excuse, Peg. This is bigger than both of us. If, if God was here, he'd sanction this. We're having the most wonderful time, and it's right. That's always the rationalization for a bit of the other. Um, Do you not agree, Peg? Am I, am I... I don't think I analyzed things to that point. Okay. I think I was acting really out of vulnerability. Okay. And I was, I was so vulnerable, in fact, that I was very, very easily seduced. Okay. Oh, yes. You were waiting to be taken. That's what, that's what you're trying to say. Yes. Hi. Hi. Gay, can I just ask Peg, was she very young when she got married? Yeah. She sounds she was very young when How she old? got married. How old? I was 23. How but old was I he? Wouldn't, 27, but I wouldn't have considered myself naive. I had considerable experience, I would have said, of the world at that point. I mean, I had, I had a master's degree from Yale University, and I In was what? not... Uh, social science, I should know about. <laughs> of, of all things, yes, sir. What, what do you want to say? Uh, Peggy mentioned that she felt that she was waiting to be taken because she was feeling insecure, etc. Mm. Um, and I think most of us were feeling the same way. But some like Colin there, 
um, who must have girls pretty much jumping on his bones every time he walks out of a door. Yeah, do you find what, that... What an attractive way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> do you find that easier to, um, because of the constant reconfirming of your own self-confidence, to deal with, or would you think it a bigger temptation? Um, I don't understand that question. <laughs> it's just that um, if, I, if I was in Colin's position, I'd feel very confident, and if I was with someone, oh, yes. I wouldn't have to I, think I about see. looking at somebody yes. else so I much. See. Yes, I, you take full advantage of it, you mean? <laughs> no, I, I, I personally don't think I would, but I was wondering whether it's easier to do that or not, but I'm never going to be in that situation. So. Well, he has only one girlfriend, haven't you, Colin? I have only one girlfriend, yeah, and I've known her since I was fat, so I don't think I'm anything special. So <laughs> it's a way to say that I've known her since she was fat. Most people say I've known her since she was 14 or 18 or whatever. <laughs> Nihal, could I ask you to sing a song? We'd love to sing a song. You, a love yeah. song. A love song. Ah, yeah. not a you. love song. Not. Yes, a love song. I insist a love song. Yes. Tommy, don't get married, Tommy. Don't get married. Nor did I tell you. No. Yeah. Oh, yes, a story to go with this. Yeah. Yes. On Monday, when Richard rang, is he telling us about this book and everything? Yes. Um, I, Mick, I was meeting Mick in town, in Limerick, and we went into this pub, and we left that pub actually because there was television on and everything, because we wanted to talk and see could, could we enter this vulnerable space against all the. The odds. <laughs> so um, we went into another pub then, and there was another television, uh, three televisions actually going there, but we asked them to put up to our phone television, and we went down to the back, you see, we were just talking about the romance trap, you see, and all the romance, romance, romance. And you were saying to me, what is romance, you see? And this fella comes in the door, and you'd know now he's, he's 200 pounds, so well, not, not exactly, but a, a good few anyway. And so he comes over, I'm nosy, he said, I'm nosy, but I hope you always have romance in your lives, you see? So we couldn't believe that. We just as we were talking about romance. So he went off, off to the loo, and then he came down again. He said, now, now, I'm a musician. Can I come and sing you a song? This song was lucky for me, he said, and it'll be lucky for you. And he didn't know who the musicians at all. So he sat down beside us. And he, the, the, he sat down for 20 minutes. We, were, we, were, we had to be somewhere else in two minutes' time, so he said, well, maybe just one song, you see? And he started off and took out a harmonica and started playing. It was actually it was very brilliant. beautiful singing, brilliant. you see? Brilliant. So he kind of, we were quite happy to be trapped there for about yeah. 20 minutes. And, uh, and finally, then I said, uh, well, you know, maybe we can sing a song as well for you. And it was a double-pronged thing. I did actually want to sing this song with Norin to him. He was a lovely man. And... Um, <laughs> And also, I think it was a way of getting out and getting the guitar off him, you know, so we could actually <laughs> move off after yeah. that. And, uh, but we just so we sang that, and yeah. we hadn't sung this song for years and years and years, not since we were students. Yeah. Sing it. Yeah. And so we sing. haven't. So this is a song that was lucky for us, and it may be lucky, lucky for, for you. And like any relationship, it might break down any minute. <laughs> <laughs> Like the trembling heart of a captive bird. 
romantic. Come on, that's romantic. That's romantic. Let's face it, after 23 and a half years of marriage, that's pretty romantic, and good on you that can do that. I hope the Late Late Show won't become like Hello Magazine now. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't just all romantic, you know. I know. I'll just, I'll just I know. throw in one last one, and that is, uh, it's important from from my point of view. I think it, obviously it was very courageous of of Peg to write this book, but also I think it was courageous of her to actually have the affair, mm. because in a way it was facing up or challenging something in herself. It was another way of doing it, and if you think of what the option would have that been, that would be dangerous. Yeah, to be honest, it would be. It's, 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 these are dangerous that's ideas, that's but, uh, but there, there's something truthful in in, in, yes. in in a sense, not something, but there is a, an essential truth or a search or a journey. And what she's and talking exactly, about. And even to go back to, my, to the point I made in the beginning, which sounded very facile there, and I know this one was coming back in it, and that was saying, would, uh, you know, affairs for uh, the two of us in the future kind of thing, you know? I think what we were talking about when I said, please God, what I was saying there was that no one of us, we, we can't all, just because we're married, doesn't mean that we're not attracted to other, other people or other people are not attracted to us. Right. It just depends on how far you take that to, right. or just right. how honest you are to yourself and your, that space, that vulnerable space yeah. between you. Yeah. Don't get married, Tommy. Oh, well, after seeing that now... <laughs> yeah. Are you shocked, Tom? Oh, yeah. 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 We have to leave it there, Peg. Thank you very much indeed. This is Peg Grimes, and the book is called The Romance Trap. Peg Grimes, and thank you, Hall and Noreen. August Colin, August Tommy, August Louis. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. We have to leave you now. We're over time. Good night until next week. God bless you. Good night. Goodbye. Thank you. In